द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह असी इस प्रोग्राम से उन इशूज से गल करते हैं जो थोड़ी लाइफ में बड़ी क्लोजली टच करते हैं अज असी एक ऐसी इलेक्शन के बारे गल करा जी सा इमीजिएट लाइफ से एक बड़ा वाला इम्पैक्ट करती है अज साडे शामिल हैं मिस मीना मलिक जो कि क्वींस के डिस्ट्रिक्ट अटर्नी के ऑफिस से लड़ रहे हैं असी मिस मलिक का स्वागत करते हैं वेलकम मिस मलिक थैंक यू सो मच हर जॉब मिस मलिक बिफोर वी वी स्पीक अबाउट यू एज एन इंडिविजुअल एंड एज अ कैंडिडेट कैन यू टेल अस टेल आर व्यूअर्स द रोल ऑफ अ डिस्ट्रिक्ट अटर्नी इन आर क्रिमिनल जस्टिस सिस्टम एब्सोल्युटली सो द रोल ऑफ द डिस्ट्रिक्ट अटर्नी इज एक्चुअली क्वाइट पावरफुल A, the district attorney in Queens County is the top law enforcement official in the county. Mm-hmm. And in Queens we have a population of 2.4 million people. It is the most diverse county in the country if not the world. And the role of the district attorney is to enforce the laws of the state of New York. And so that is what the role of the district attorney does mm-hmm. and it covers the entire borough of Queens. Uh as well like we uh, we understand there's a lot of discretionary and other powers that a da has i would like you to tell our viewers something about th- those powers so that uh, they they understand the importance of making the right choice in this election yes so as i said the district attorney is the top law enforcement official mm-hmm. in the entire county the district attorney has the power to authorize arrests to make sure that people come into court that they can be charged with crimes they have the authority to authorize a plea deal or to make sure that a case goes to trial and they have a, the authority to dismiss a case as well so a district attorney wields great great power in the criminal justice system but the duty of a prosecutor is to do justice not merely convict mm-hmm. so uh queens has a huge uh immigrant population have we ever had any representation in this office from the immigrant immigrant population that's a great question this seat has never been held by a woman or a person of color in fact this particular race is is so important because the last time there was a competitive race for district attorney in Queens County was in 1977 wow. 42 years ago So it has never been held by a woman or a person of color and Queens being the most diverse county in the country if not the entire world it is very important that we have representation in the district attorney's office and that the district attorney as well as the leadership in the office reflects the communities that it serves definitely and uh, so so tell us about yourself did you grow up in Queens I did my parents and I immigrated to this country in the early 1970s I started off my life in a basement apartment in Corona Queens mm-hmm. and they came here to this country basically like many immigrant families do to find a better life and to make sure that their children have a better life for themselves. And so th- the pathway f- of of my parents journey was my father was born in India, mm-hmm. raised in Pakistan mm-hmm. and he had a 6th grade education. Our job. Okay. He had to leave school because he had to help support his family. Mm-hmm. And when he met and married my mother, it was my mother that had the opportunity to bring us to the United States. She was a union worker, a registered nurse, mm-hmm. and she had the opportunity to come and work as a nurse in mm-hmm. New York City, which is how we ended up here in New York. So my father was a machine operator in Glendale, Queens for mm-hmm. a paper box company for his entire life. Mm-hmm. and my mother was a nurse and they worked two and three jobs each to save enough money to move out of that basement apartment in Corona and buy a house of their own in Elmhurst which is where my mother still lives today that's a great american story and and did you go to school in queens you said i did i actually am a, a product of public schools mm-hmm. i went to ps13 in elmhurst okay. and i also worked hard enough with, with my parents guidance and with their success and i managed to get into stuyvesant high school and i graduated from stuyvesant high school before going on to college great and uh where where did you go for your law studies 
My law studies were done in Washington, D.C. I actually worked in Washington, D.C. between college and law school. I went to Bates College in Maine mm -hmm. and decided to take two years off and work at the D.C. Public Defender Service, helping investigate crimes and helping defend people who could not afford an attorney. But my path took me to become an attorney and a lawyer because I've always wanted to give a voice to the voiceless. So I ended up going to the American University, Washington College of Law in Washington, D.C. And after graduation, I came back to my beloved county of Queens mm -hmm. to serve the people of this good county. <laughs> tell us about your work experience that makes you the most viable candidate for this position. So I have not only worked on the prosecution side, as I said, I started off at, at the DC Public Defender Service working with poor people who could not afford an attorney. Mm -hmm. But after law school, I came back to Queens and I started my legal career at the Queens District Attorney's Office where I worked on some of the most heinous crimes. My specialty was special victims types of cases. So child homicide, child physical sexual abuse, adult sex crimes, human trafficking cases, some domestic violence, and crimes against our elders. And that's what I concentrated on. In 2014, the late and the great Brooklyn District Attorney, Ken Thompson, tapped me to become his special counsel and help him build a conviction review unit in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say since 2014, when we began the unit and we started it, we have exonerated and freed 25 wrongfully convicted people in Brooklyn alone. That's amazing. Uh, you worked at the Queen's uh, uh, DA's office for 15 years. Yes. Sir? And, and, and how was that experience? It was a wonderful experience. M my passion was making sure that women, children, and our elders were protected. Mm -hmm. And I worked there. I was given the opportunity by the late Judge Brown to work in the office and make sure that I was protecting women, children, and the elderly. Those cases are not easy. They're not for everyone because of the sensitive nature of the cases. I dealt with a lot of immigrant women and children who were victims of crime, some of the most heinous sexual assault cases. But it was very, very rewarding work to make sure that we held people accountable for their actions while offering protection to the victims. And, and uh, uh, as a DA, uh, are there any reforms that you believe need to be done to this office you're planning to bring? Yes, so like any other industry, right, hard job, you have in medicine, it's ever evolving. Mm -hmm. In science, it's ever evolving. In technology, it's ever evolving. It's, the criminal justice system is no different. It's ever evolving. And so I think what we can do is come forward with a 21st century modern day prosecutor's vision for the office. And one of the first things I want to do is start a conviction review unit because it's very important that when people have claims of wrongful conviction, we look into them and we take them seriously so that the public has trust in the office. And I wanna start a conviction review unit there. I wanna make sure that I start a civil rights and integrity bureau mm -hmm. so that we can look at claims of police misconduct mm -hmm. and hold police accountable where they need to be held accountable. I also want to shore up the Immigrant Affairs Bureau and make sure that we are protecting our immigrants, not only from ICE, but we're offering them the, op the opportunity to stay in this country, even though sometimes they have made a mistake. Uh, and uh, from, from there on, you joined the Civilian Complaint Review Board. Yes. Is that right? Yes, after I worked with Brooklyn District Attorney Ken Thompson, mm -hmm. I was tapped by this current mayoral administration to head up the Civilian Complaint Review Board and help revamp it mm -hmm. and re-energize the agency. And so as executive director and the head of the Civilian Complaint Review Board, it's a citywide agency mm -hmm. and it looks into claims of police misconduct and I was tasked with revamping it mm -hmm. and it investigates and prosecutes cases of police misconduct. So while I was there, I made sure that there were more in-depth in investigations that mm -hmm. were going on, more proactive prosecutions mm -hmm. for those cases that needed to be prosecuted, mm -hmm. and more community outreach. We actually increased our community outreach over 200% while I was executive director. 
And we also created a data transparency initiative where we took all of the data that the agency produced mm -hmm. in terms of police misconduct complaints and put it on the website so that it's accessible to the public. Amazing, but uh, do you believe there's still some room for uh, improvement with the mechanism for discovery, especially when it comes to police uh, misconduct and internal investigations? Yes, I firmly believe that where there is police misconduct and a finding of police misconduct, that people who are accused of crimes and their defense attorneys should know about that misconduct because it goes to the credibility and the veracity of the police officer. And as Deputy Attorney General in Washington, D.C., I had access and my staff had access to the police personnel records of the Metropolitan Police Department so that we could look and see whether there were any claims of substantiated misconduct by police officers and we would turn that information over to the defense so that it would create a fairer and just, more just system when people were charged with crimes. Asi gal kar rahe hain Ms. Meena Malik naal jo candidate hai Queens DA office waste asi rana gal jaari rakhange ek chote si break de baad The way forward is thoda fir swagat hai aaj asi gal kar rahe hain Queens de DA di election di candidate Ms. Meena Malik de naal Ms. Malik you have also Uh, served as uh, deputy uh, in the deputy uh, attorney general for public safety at the office of attorney general washington dc's capacity can you yes. tell us something about that yes i was deputy attorney general to attorney general carl racine mm -hmm. and basically my role as deputy attorney general for the entire public safety division which had 110 employees mm -hmm. was to oversee the criminal section juvenile section domestic violence special victims and restorative justice and victim services initiative along with some other sections. And basically it was to make sure that public safety was implemented in Washington DC. But wh while I did that, I also did some other things. We came up with anti-truancy initiatives to make sure we were breaking the school to prison pipeline for our young people, mm -hmm. alternatives to incarceration, mm -hmm. and we expanded our restorative justice initiative not only from juveniles but also to the 18 to 24 year olds who were charged with nonviolent offenses. And so we were really working towards making sure that we were not criminalizing poverty, we were not criminalizing people with mental health issues, mm -hmm. and we're not criminalizing people with substance use disorder. So we started a mental health community court, we expanded drug court, and we also started a hope court for young human trafficking victims there. So a lot of progressive issues that you have uh, worked on, and uh, you also teach at Harvard Law School, is that right? I do, it's very invigorating and re-energizing when I go up and teach the students at Harvard Law School because they are very energized and very excited about being the next generation of attorneys. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I do trial advocacy work and I teach them the skills to take into the courtroom so that they can be the next generation of attorneys in terms of litigation skills. And a lot of them want to go into public service themselves. So, so with this wide experience, uh, tell us what, what inspired you to run for this office? What inspired me to run for this office is really very personal. Hard job. Uh, I came here as an immigrant. My parents were immigrants also. And growing up in the 1980s and the 1990s in New York City was not easy. Mm -hmm. Crime was at its highest in New York City. And I saw a lot of crime, but I also saw a lot of people who were wrongfully arrested, right? Mm -hmm. For substance use disorder, for mental health issues, and because of poverty related crimes. And so I really wanted to get involved in the criminal justice system to make it fairer and to make the community safer for everyone. So I saw people who were victimized, who were victims of assault, that was unfair to them, and I wanted to protect them, and I wanted to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I saw people who were wrongfully arrested for low-level crimes, which did nothing but saddle them with a criminal conviction for their lives and give them collateral consequences in terms of their ability to get a job, their ability to get housing, their ability to get a loan, and sometimes even their ability to get a license. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to change that. Mm -hmm. And what I also noticed 
as I was growing up was people in law enforcement, the police who policed our communities, the detectives who policed our communities, the prosecutors who prosecuted cases coming out of our communities, and the judges who sat in judgment of our cases. Mm -hmm. None of them looked like us. Mm -hmm. And certainly the people in policy making positions, the most important seats at the table, did not look like us. Mm -hmm. And that's what inspired me to become an attorney and to get into criminal law because I wanted to make sure that we had the representation in the criminal justice system. Community no egal uh, samajni uh, chahidi hai or jis tarah Ms. Malik does the pain ki jere positions of power and jithu policy bandi hai, enact hon di hai, uthe representation ek requirement hai, ek zarurat hai or sanu iste kam karna pega. Ms. Uh, Ms. Malik, uh, the, the immediate issues that, that our uh, community faces where uh, we see a role for the DA's office are things like uh, hate crime, are kids getting bullied in schools. Mm -hmm. uh, do, 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 you, do you have any specific uh, policies to uh, confront those issues? Yeah, so this actually hits very close to home for me, Harjot, because mm -hmm. when my father came to this country, like I said, he was an immigrant. He was a dark-skinned Muslim, mm -hmm. and he spoke with an accent. Mm -hmm. And I remember being a five-year-old girl and walking with him to the store, and he talked about how he was harassed and intimidated and at one time even assaulted by a group of young white men who were hanging out on the corner near the corner store where he would go daily to get his newspaper and his tea or coffee. And I remember thinking to myself, I wanted to protect my father from these people and to make sure that no harm came to him. Mm -hmm. And I felt very helpless mm -hmm. and I felt powerless because mm -hmm. I was a mere five-year-old girl mm -hmm. and couldn't protect him. So it hit close to me, mm -hmm. close to home for me. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do is to make sure that our communities are protected, mm -hmm. that we send the message that hate crimes will not be tolerated in Queens County, whether they're based on race, gender, sexual orientation, or religious beliefs. And I firmly believe that we need to hold those accountable who commit hate crimes mm -hmm. to make sure that it doesn't happen again. But we shouldn't also be reactive, we should be proactive mm -hmm. in terms of hate crimes. And we need to educate the community about tolerance, mm -hmm. acceptance, mm -hmm. diversity, and understanding. Mm -hmm. And this way, hopefully, we can all live in peace together. Yeah. And with respect to bullying in the schools, I firmly believe in the restorative justice model. Mm -hmm. And restorative justice is a way of bringing an offender and a victim together mm -hmm. to talk about the harm that was caused, the offense that was caused, and how it affected both parties. Mm -hmm. And the goal of restorative justice is to make sure that the harm doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. So I've seen it work as Deputy Attorney General in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and that's something that I think should be implemented in all schools in New York City to make sure that there's a healthy understanding mm -hmm. of how offenses and harms can affect people and to make sure that the harm doesn't recur again. Yeah, and, and the balance has to be there, uh, the offending party uh, being kids as well. Yes, absolutely. All right. One section of our community particularly, which is uh, very, uh, I should say vulnerable to violence and hate crimes and everything because of the work conditions are the cab drivers, yes. right? They, we believe, uh, need added protection. Is there anything that you can, th you're thinking of doing for them, uh, which would provide that added protection to them? Well, from what I understand, especially under the current presidential administration, there has been an increase in hate crimes, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And we need to make sure that our taxi cab drivers and our for hire vehicle drivers are protected mm -hmm. from these hate crimes. And it, it's a shame and it's very sad when people are treated differently or assaulted or attacked based on the color of their skin mm -hmm. or because they're wearing a turban mm -hmm. or because of their religious beliefs. And so my plan is to make sure that our taxi cab drivers are fully protected, mm -hmm. that we are going to have very in depth investigations into all of these cases mm -hmm. and that we are going to have proactive prosecutions to hold people accountable when they commit hate crimes and when they assault cab drivers. You know, the, committee, uh, the community feels that uh, 
in some previous cases uh, the the offenders have be, have been let go with nothing more than a slap on the wrist I, I hope it changes under you absolutely when what I plan to do is to make sure that we have a unit or a bureau that is fully set up to deal with hate crimes particularly against our cab drivers because we want to make sure that they are protected mm -hmm. and I plan to have a liaison with the district attorney's office and with the taxi drab the taxi driver community to make sure that we are listening to them and we understand the issues that they face on a daily basis mm -hmm. and to make sure that we are protecting them going forward and we're implementing the best policies and the best measures to do that. That would be much appreciated and much needed. Uh, Ms. Malik, do we need some Punjabi speakers at the DA's office? You know, Harjot, that's an excellent question. In fact, as I said earlier, Queens is the most diverse county mm -hmm. in the country, if not the world. Mm -hmm. And we speak over 180 languages in Queens alone. Mm -hmm. And it is very important as the district attorney's office, mm -hmm. when we are trying to protect our communities and trying to keep them safe and whole, mm -hmm. that we have people who can provide language access to all of our different communities. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of Punjabi speakers, I plan to hire an interpreter Mm -hmm. for Punjabi speakers so that we can communicate with Punjabi victims as well as witnesses who speak Punjabi because we have to have that open line of communication and we have to be able to understand each other and they have to be able to participate fully in the criminal justice process when they are either a victim of a crime or a witness to a crime. And do you plan to appoint a Sikh ADA once you are the DA? Yes, we're going to be able to look at the law schools in Queens, as mm -hmm. well as across the country. Mm -hmm. And as I said in the beginning, the Queens DA's office has to be diverse. Mm -hmm. And the diversity in the office has to reflect the communities that it serves. Mm -hmm. So it is extremely important that we include Sikh members in our district attorney's office, both as assistant district attorneys, as well as investigators and interpreters, if we can do that. We appreciate that. Uh, Ms. Malik, uh, we recently lost our long-serving uh, district attorney, Mr. Richard Brown. Yes. How, how do you see his legacy? Judge Brown, I've worked for him. I worked for him for 15 years, and he leaves behind a strong legacy. He was in the assembly. He was counsel to Governor Hugh Carey. He was a learned jurist, and he served the community of Queens for 28 years. I am fully aware that I have shoes to fill as district attorney and I plan to do that and I plan to make changes going forward so that we can make the district attorney's office even better than what it was. Ms. Malik, in the end I'll ask you, what do you feel differentiates you from other candidates in this race? What differentiates me, Harjot, are three things really. Number one, my lived experience of growing up in Queens, of being an immigrant and understanding the immigrant experience in Queens, of being a woman and a person of color and seeing the world through that lens. But the second thing also is that I've been involved in the criminal justice space for over 20 years mm -hmm. on the defense side as well as the prosecution side. I've worked alongside police officers and I've also held them accountable for their misconduct. And I've already led a citywide agency of 200 employees with a $16.5 million budget. Mm -hmm. No other candidate in this race has done that. And the third reason is I've already implemented criminal justice reform in three major agencies. The Brooklyn District Attorney's Office as the Executive Director of the Civilian Complaint Review Board, mm -hmm. as well as Deputy Attorney General in the Attorney General's Office. And I'm proud to say that I am the only candidate in this race who has looked into the eyes of a woman who was raped, of a child who was abused, of someone who was the victim of police misconduct, mm -hmm. and into the eyes of the wrongfully convicted. And I'm proud to say that I've promised all of them that I could get them justice. A son Sade Queen's DA the election day candidate, Ms. Malik. As you meet Kardia ki to see inadi Gala closely Sudi Hongia June 
25th. June 25th is a Democratic primary, right? Yes. So, uh, we'll ask you, Asita Nukendia, ki to see bar ao is uh, election which vote pao kyunki a jedi positions and a sadi community nu badi closely touch kar diyen sade upar impact kar diyen miss malik thank you very much for coming here today thank and you. we wish you all the best with this election and with your role as a da in the future thank you so much harjot i appreciate your time thank you